Hey everybody, Facia here with Legacy of Light in conjunction with One Love Wellness Center here in Menasha, Wisconsin, coming to you for one of my 365 days from my heart to yours. And right now we are doing the book, If the Buddha Dated, um, a handbook for finding love on the spiritual path. And we are into part two today of the book, so it's Awaken Your Desire. Who are you and what do you want? So chapter 11 is to send a clear intention for your love. While we are not in charge of the cosmic play of energy that moves through our lives, we can explore ourselves to see if we are sending a clear, unambivalent intention. I'm here, I'm ready, I'm open. Whether you realize it or not, you are a powerful electromagnetic field transmitting signals through the words, body language, tone of voice, and hundreds of nonverbal cues. <clears throat> this occurs at both the conscious and unconscious levels and deeply affects the interplay of our relationships. Several years ago, after being single for a long time, I spoke with my friend Laura, a psychic and astrologer of my longing for a beloved companion who could truly join me on the spiritual path. We went out to dinner, natal chart in hand. As she looked at my chart, she said that I needed to remember my vulnerability and stay connected to old feelings of being hurt as a little child so that they wouldn't get in the way. But there's no reason you can't have a lover, she said tenderly. With all the energy you put in the world, you need to have someone special but something in me believes I'm destined to be alone, I said. You don't have to be alone. The only blocks are in your mind. Just allow yourself to believe you can be in a relationship. There's no guarantee you will find someone, but at least you will send out these clear signals. After I returned home, I hiked up the mountain behind my house with Laura's words ringing in my mind. At the same time, I pondered the inner force that kept trying to convince me that I was condemned to be alone. I kept saying to myself, it's just my mind, it's just a belief. It is not who I really am. It is not my destiny. After sitting for a long time on my favorite mountain knoll, amidst the ponderosa pines overlooking the Bitterroot River in the valley below, I stood up and I said loudly, I don't have to be alone. I am ready. Did I believe it? Mm, not completely, but my shout reverberated deeply inside, cracking loose the false core of belief that had so tenaciously constricted my mind. What does all this have to do with Buddhism? Traditional Buddhism has nothing to do with manifesting anything. It involves being immersed in our moment-to-moment -moment experiences, realizing we are not our minds and making friends with every part of ourself. My sojourn up the mountain helped me to break my identification with my mind, the frightening and irrational belief in some mythical curse or destiny. By starting to dissolve this barrier, I became freer to my truer self. While this did not guarantee finding a worthy partner, I could stop getting in my own way. Later in rereading books about the Enneagram, and talking with Stephen Walensky, it became clear that the sense of being doomed to never finding the right partner was emanating from my false core belief that I am alone. My first task was to observe the thought when it arose. And remember, it was just a thought, a belief, or a conclusion I came to long ago. The second was to recognize the web of related beliefs that surrounded it. All the things I did to either prove my false core belief was true or to compensate for it. This leads me to mention another false belief in the prevalent and new age culture. Namely, if you conjure up an image of the person you want to meet, describe him or her very carefully, set your intent and send it to the universe, you will attract the person you are looking for. I tried it, it didn't work. Lots of people have tried it without success. 
And so as I was speaking the other day on this, I am in agreement completely. <laughs> um, when I talked about asking just for a healthy, loving relationship instead of placing all of these things onto somebody else. Instead of, these are the things I want. This person has to have this. This person has to have this. You know, it, 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 it sounds like it, you know, it should work. Maybe it will work, but it, it just doesn't end up working that way. And I, you know, I can attest to the same thing. As I've done that, you know, before and then... kind of like not really graded but yeah graded you know this person on that do you meet these standards are you you know good enough and there is a lot more involved in those relationships it doesn't wasn't just those things there was other things that I was working through within you know my my life and my manifestations of what I was doing but recently when I just decided to let go of all of these expectations and just asked for a healthy relationship. It was this huge weight that was just lifted off because we have everything we need inside of us. And so what we're really longing for is to to explore that with another person and, and within that other person and to accept and love them as they are. And you know, as I've said, and as it says in the book, it, you know, you don't, doesn't mean stay in abusive places. There is a difference between, you know, working through things with your partner and being abused. It's not the same thing. And you always have to trust yourself and your gut instinct. And you know, as I've said before, if it's a place that you don't want to be, move from it. So from a psychological perspective, it is a form of magical thinking because it suggests we have some forceful magnetic power over others. As if our thoughts reach out to someone and pull them towards us and they have nothing to say about it. Besides, if it were that easy, we'd all have wonderful partners by now and the dating services would be out of business. <laughs> Stephen Walensky, in a workshop, commented that belief that we have the power over others stems from the spiritualization um, stage of the early childhood development. When we are infants, we cried and our mother and our caretaker came. Our baby mind came to the conclusion that it was our cry that brought our mother, which made us all powerful. If she didn't come, we concluded we were defective, unlovable, or it was our fault. The reality is that our caretaker either came or she didn't in response to our cries, but we didn't make it happen. So instead of saying, it took me five years to manifest someone into my life, we could more accurately say, I was single for five years and finally met someone. And I'm very happy about that. <laughs> we don't need to dramatize the situation or make it supernatural. It's just what it is. After all, if people stay active and open, by the law of averages, many will eventually find a partner. Another way of becoming receptive to loving relationship is through the opening of your sexual energy. Just as animals come into heat and transmit smells and energy to attract a mate, people need to transmit that they are open to physical love. I hasten to add this, that is not just the energy of the sexual high. It is the expansive energy of the passionate caring, love, enjoyment, and sensuous blended within our sexuality. It doesn't mean acting like a Don Juan or a vamp or having instant sex with someone. You can also awaken your sexuality by making love to yourself 
by allowing that energy to expand upward into your heart and take time to luxuriate in that feeling. Explore your body and experiment with different kinds of touch. In other words, you become the lover you want to meet. Just like that statement, be the change that you wish to see. So become the lover that you are longing for. How does this fit with Buddhist notion of not being attached to the pleasure of the senses? We can deeply experience our sensuality and sexuality without becoming hooked on the feelings or getting the ego involved. We need to remember that sex doesn't mean I'm loved. I'm important. I'm okay. Rather, sexuality becomes an integral part of our human experience that flows through us and between us, embodied by love and commitment. So when you are thinking of sharing yourself, you know, in this intimate way, I have learned that it's best done with, you know, someone who is on the same level, so to speak, because you are sharing all of your energy with that person. So the, the magnitude of that I hope that you can grasp. It's all of your energy, the good, the bad, the whatever. So if somebody is, you know, stressful or angry or, you know, that type of person, they're sharing that with you. You know, and then you're sharing your thing with that. So it, it is just best if, you know, like I said, you are in the same space, on the same level. It's not to say that one person is better than the other person. You know, if you're on different levels, so to speak. It just means, you know, use caution and it's, it's at your own free will. You're taking on. It's a melding of energies. So what energy do you want to meld with is all that I'm saying. So be aware. You know, that's why it says maybe not like right away because you want to get to know somebody and make sure that, you know, they are compatible with you and your energy and, and then it will be so much more beautiful and, and energizing within that and, and, feeling with that and it will be love you know just like anything else within our life we can abuse things and you know go to the extreme on one side or the other but when you find that connection when you find that it is love it is making love and it's not just sex and it's not just this pleasure while it, there is pleasure involved, it's just not the main focus. It is so much more involved at that point. We can also make room for a lover in a very literal way using the principles of Feng Shui. But remember, as mentioned before, this is primarily a way of helping you feel clear inside. From a feng shui perspective, you can reflect your desire for a partner in your living space, particularly the bedroom. Feng shui is the art of creating balance, harmony, and prosperity in your environment. It is based on the ancient Chinese wisdom about the flow of energy in the physical world, sometimes called the art of placement. According to Jonah Kuntz, the feng shui consultant from Missoula, Montana, one can make the room in the bedroom for a new love by some of the following ways. Clean out a dresser and closet. If someone sees a crowded space, 
at a psychic level, they may feel there's no room for them. Have a symbolic invitation for someone to join you in your bed. Buy two nightstands, two reading lights, two pillows. Clear out TVs and electronics in the bedroom, which only serve as distractions. Throughout your house, remove sentimental objects from past lovers. And if you're a widow, take any pictures from your former partner out of the bedroom. Most people don't want to make love with ghosts looking on. <laughs> remove clutter from your living space, closets, and basements. Think about what symbolizes love and marriage to you. It might be flowers, sculptures, wind chimes, or a beautiful picture. You might place objects in pairs in the bedroom, two candles, two roses, two little animals, or statues looking at each other to communicate your desire to be part of a couple. You can explore the feng shui process in detail reading books. I recommend Tara Catherine Collins. You can attend classes or hire a consultant to the field to visit your home. Another approach is to simply open your eyes to your living space as if you walked in for the first time. Is there a free flow of energy, relaxed, bright, warm, spacious, making space for that lover? Clearing out your living space will clear out some of your attachments on the inside. In Jonah's word, if you are... If your possessions aren't serving a purpose, if they aren't taking you forward, then get rid of them. And another one is, you know, if you don't love it, also get rid of it. If it doesn't, you know, serve that purpose, if you don't love it, let it go. Whatever you may choose to do, remember that you are radiant joy and vitality and truly care for the well-being of others. You send out a high voltage invitation for love. So when we radiate this from our heart, it comes into our existence. We create it. So we just need to be clear and aware of what intentions we are sending out. And that means, you know, it's taking some time within ourselves to, to really listen to the messages that we are sending out. You know, like she was thinking that she was alone and she was never going to be with somebody. And, you know, in not past relationships, I've taken on the caretaker role of like, oh, I'm going to care for you and help you and, and make you see how wonderful you are and and that's all well and good but that's not the basis for a, a happy healthy loving relationship because we each need to take care of ourselves i don't need to take care of anybody else so Set clear intentions, get to know exactly what your intentions are. And, you know, maybe there are some hidden intentions that you are sending out if you are, you know, having, having trouble finding a relationship. And, you know, let go of these expectations of, you know, what you think this person should be. And just ask for, you know, the broader, expansive, I desire a happy, healthy, loving relationship. And I am willing to let go of anything that I'm attached to that is blocking me from, from finding that relationship. And, you know, show me what those blocks are so that I can become aware and and change them to to suit my needs and to let go of things that aren't serving me anymore so send a clear intention for love and know that ultimately no matter what you are a loved and adored for just being you and you do have everything that you need inside you.